and we're back nocturnal duck here with a brand new deck just for you and your sweet head and this is a surprise just for you guys it's a spider tribal mono green spider tribal let's check it out so spider tribal let's have a look i wanted to do a brew around hatchery spider i have three copies and i've been wanting to do something cool with this for a while and i feel like this deck really suits it so the way that this works is when you cast this spell reveal the top x cards of your library where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard you may put a green permanent card with converted mana x or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in the bottom at any order so a free cast of a green permanent it does not have to be a creature or anything like that so that's the main thing that got me excited it's a five seven with reach as well so that's a solid solid creature um so our idea is to be able to have four creatures in the graveyard and then cast this because everything under the spider is then a permanent under the spider is then a target right so we can find a questing beast and attack that turn with it we can find an Arasta and then we're set up with another blocker and whatnot. One of the main things that really surprised me is when you go and fetch a uh, canvas transformation with a hatchery spider trigger. So you can cast a spider and then you find one of these and throw it on one of their creatures. You get a card draw and stop a blocker or a flyer or whatever you need. And just it's crazy. If they've got a 7-7 seven, seven flyer, you throw this on it, it just turns it into a 3-3. Three, three and we get a card draw out of it so that's a really nice nifty trick that's just a little side mention for that so that's the main sort of brew that i wanted to brew around so what i paired it up with was all the other spiders a rasta uh we lightly mentioned on she is you know pretty solid blocker reach three five and an enchantment which will come into play but whenever they cast an instant or sorcery we get another spider with reach another one too so that's really cool it can help fill our board um the other spiders that we have is our chain web this guy is pretty broken because he comes down and then he fights a creature doing one damage because it's whatever his strength is as long as the creature's with flying so if they've got a healer's hawk or whatnot we can just play this and zap it so it's an early game removal for one one flyers and then with the escape it escapes with three one one counters on it so it becomes four we can then now late game bring down a 4-4 four, four flyer like a shepherd or something like that so for you know this one drop can end up being quite a solid removal piece plus a really good chump blocker through the game um the last spider is the snare spinner this guy is a beautiful blocker he uh turn two he comes down one three body so he can the chump block pretty easily but when he blocks a flyer he gets a buff of two Zero. so he becomes a 3-3 when he's blocking a flyer so he can actually go head to head with a lot of the things that become quite challenging throughout the course of some of these matchups you know um like rankle and stuff like that like he uh, this little two drop can tangle with him so that's a nice little addition so there are all the spiders in the deck so what i decided to do beyond that was lean into a little bit of a citizen champion enchantment sort of brew mainly because i wanted the card draw and i think with green the main card draw you'd go for is sort of adventure but i didn't really want to run an adventure spider deck i wanted it to be more of an enchantment brew because i felt enchantments these days are so flexible so four setters and champions just means we can get a lot of card draw happening and he becomes his own powerhouse and he's definitely a target so you know him going to the graveyard is ammunition for the spider but also you know getting the removal out of their hand and by the time that we do we generally get lots of value from him so he's a value powerhouse and the enchantments that we paired with him is our Sokola grave uh, grove dancer i can't pronounce the names forgive me this is interesting four copies of this guy when a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere you gain one life and then you can pay three to put the top card into your graveyard we're not really using that at all we're mainly using it because we're it's an enchantment so we get a trigger from the champion 
And then we have another little shenanigan with our binding of the Titans. So this one will put the top three cards of both us and the opponent's graveyard into the graveyard on the top of our deck. And if we have a couple of these out and any land goes in, we get a bunch of life, which is really cool. So then the next turn, we can exile something like a cat from their graveyard or an agent of treachery. And then on the third phase of the saga, we can bring back a land or a um, creature from the graveyard. So we can bring back a questing beast or a hatchery spider or a whatever. But a land as is, is well is quite handy. We can you know, get a trigger from it going to the graveyard and then we can get it back when we need it later if we want. So that is actually a really nice combo. The Grove Dancer and the Binding of the Titans. The Binding of the Titans really helps pump things into the graveyard for the spider. And we're not too worried about things going in there because we're going to get it back on the third phase and you know we can get back to things like the champion and the questing beast like i said it means it's more of a toolbox we use our graveyard as a toolbox but it's also ammunition and the best part is that the opponent does it as well so they're at a bit of a disadvantage through the first and second phase and there's potential of us gaining a bit of life off this so this is a bit of a, a all rounder i think this works well with the synergy of everything else in the deck um the other enchantment is the wolf willow haven now i've been on the fence with this i really do enjoy this but i have also i don't know like it's good because it's a mono green enchantment it comes down it gives us a card draw with the citizen uh, champion down but it's also a uh, ramp so on turn two you play this and then on turn three we can drop a land and be on you know turn four so it's essentially a ramp piece which can help us get up to the hatchery spider a lot easier and in the meantime get triggers and then if they start board wiping we potentially have bodies on the battlefield still so i think this has a good place a good home in the deck um, but let me know if there's something that you would rather run than this because i feel like this kenrith transformation has definitely caught me a little bit off guard as much as the opponent so if there was something similar to this as an enchantment for green then i'd be more inclined and i've been sort of scratching my noggin over it but yeah hit me up in the comments and let me know our relentless pursuit this one is kind of nice like if you think about a mono green deck and then you can look at the top four cards of your library and put a creature or land and the rest into the graveyard so we are loading it again for the hatchery spider and we're also putting land in there for the grave, grove dancer which can give us life and ammunition to a degree plus two card draws essentially you know so three mana and we get to select out of the top four cards occasionally you whiff but most of the time you're casting this because you need to find something you're trying to find that land that you need for the spider or you're trying to find the questing beast or a champion or whatever so this can help you just find the right piece at the right time and then also get ready for a toolbox later with the binding and the hatchery spider all from the graveyard. Uh, the questing beast is here mainly because, you know, it's unblockable from creatures power to a less, which is comes into play quite a lot in this current meta. It also will do damage to a planeswalker without attacking it. You, if it does damage to a player, it deals the same to their planeswalker. So that's busted. But the free cast from a hatchery spider is just phenomenal. When you cast this when you've got four creatures in your graveyard and then you dig up a questing beast throw that under the battlefield with the spider and swing straight in with the beast they kind of definitely crap their pants they don't see that coming and you feel like a boss and then when they remove this we just pluck it back later with our binding of titans when we need it so it can really kind of loop in this weird shenanigan sort of way where the opponent thinks green things ramp and they're waiting for big big chunky creatures our chunky creatures aren't necessarily a threat they are just good defensive pieces but what ends up happening is we fill our board with such good defense that they can't get through and we keep gaining life and we keep filling our board with tokens and buffing our creatures and putting bigger things down for free and getting things back from the graveyard so they just end up either scooping or you know we just uh, outpace them with bigger chunkier guys um, so i really do enjoy how different this runs for a green deck it is very not noticeably different for you and the opponent i can't emphasize that enough um, it's just kind of 
it throws how you think and what you think about green with the combat math, with what you expect on turn two or three or four. And I think you get the better of the opponent for most of the time. Uh, the thing I need to mention is the land. Now, I only have, you know, one castle in here because we're not necessarily trying to get these big rampy things like I've been saying this whole time. But one can come in handy at the right time to get this down occasionally the the main thing that i wanted to say about the land is four blast zones this thing is just a unseen gem in the green deck so our green removal that we have essentially is the transformation which isn't is actually removal um and our questing beast which hopefully you know we kind of force them to block with a good creature so that's the only real removal that we have so the blast zone is a really good removal piece and it's a bit of a slug but when you come across a de black devotion deck or a, a deck that runs the witch's oven and the cats you don't have to put any counters on this to get rid of one ones you can drop this late game and then just sacrifice it you can drop this on turn four sacrifice it and get rid of three ovens and three cats in one foul swoop or their whole board of one ones and that they end up just crying so i've done that a few times this is a beautiful beautiful piece of removal and our main one of the deck so definitely four copies of blast zone one labyrinth uh, is mainly because if we are facing down something we can't deal with like a big drucker or something we want to be able to just stop whatever they're doing so um you know the land is a little bit more of a toolbox as well and i think with green it's a little bit you know i can't i keep saying it how unexpected it is but uh, from you know turn sort of three to sort of turn four they kind of catch wind of what we're doing but it's too late and then we start using our lands to just really turn the board around to our advantage i don't know i don't know just check out the games you build this deck and tell me what you think and if there's anything that i'm not seeing make sure you let me know don't forget to like subscribe follow hit me up in the comments as well because i'd love to hear back from you guys the uh, deck building so far has been quite fun and this is my first deck that i'm doing in a new series that i'm trying to do for each set where i do a mono colored build so this is my first one this is my mono green spider tribal so the next one i am possibly going with blue or red they're the two that i've got sort of brewing next so you can expect to see them sort of coming out later through the week as a little set um i'll do it as a separate playlist and i will also do the um deck list in the comment section below so don't forget to like subscribe follow again and uh yeah check out the games tell me what you think nocturnal duck out okay so this is a good start three lands cast everything in our hand Start off with our Skola. Skola, the Grove Dancer. Alright. So we'll start off with him because when we do start dumping things into our graveyard, we want to get, you know, some sort of benefit from it. Plus, if he uses removal on that, we're cheering. Okay, so, familiar. And the oven. Sure. Okay, so we'll go in with the citizen. We might as well just keep him for blocks. You know, he's not going to get through, so... Yep, get all that shenanigans done. Okay. Sure, that's a nice little combo. Now we'll get some into the graveyard, hopefully a bunch of his cats. We've got a bunch of life there, so that was good. Another card draw. 
we're going for some damage now. So with our blast zone, we can get rid of the oven. So that's nice. That's our one little removal piece next turn, which should shut him down pretty quickly. So now he's holding off so he can bring a creature in to get the life to put the one count on the other creature. Or does he have straight removal? Because I'm getting rid of it out of your graveyard next turn. Okay. Sure. No worries. And the cat. And then you gotta put the one one on the flyer. It's a nice little combo. Except you're going to lose that as well. Um, we get rid of the, get the life out of it at least. Okay, so we'll get rid of all of your one one things. So that's got to be quite painful for him. It feels good with green having blast zone be just a straight removal like that. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, we'll get a blast zone back. Thank you. And we shall put that onto whatever. Get a card draw. Okay, so I think we go digging for an enchantment now. Cool. And then we'll get in for a damage. Yeah. Uh, so you can still buff that guy, that's pretty, pretty solid. Pretty solid indeed. Sure, he's got another cat. I doubt he's gonna bring that down. Cool, okay, so we'll put that, and then this. Got zero creatures for him. So I think we start bringing some down. I'm just going to get the damage in while we can. Don't mind about him getting bigger. I'm going to have jump blocks for days. Sure. Now I could put a couple of counters on that, which isn't a bad idea right now. Make that a four drop. Get rid of this and this in one hit. Okay, so I'm going to put three counters on here. What if I? And I won't swing in at all. No, no, and no. I'm going to cancel. No attacks. So next turn we get rid of his enchantment putting the 1-1 one, one counters on. Sure. Cool. And we'll just take that. No worries. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're getting rid of our 4-4, four, four, which sucks. But we are getting to get in with solid damage here. So he's gonna take a butt ton. This green deck is just relentless and it's hard to see coming. It's not your classic green ramp deck. 
There's no ramp at all. Yeah. Sure. And we shall lost there, killing it. That's fine. Um, I am gonna go with a hatchery spider. I guess. And he's just gonna take that. So we will block with the cat, but we've got a big blocker now. That's fine. Okay, so what do I think I should do here? Another citizen. And then a draw or two. Another hatchery spider. Okay, so he's seen how much we're just going to fill our board and win. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Start off with our... God, I hate it when it does this. So frustrating. Can we play the game now, or do we have to sit here and listen to a glitch the whole time? I only paid... how much money have I spent on this game? I'm just listen to a glitch. And he's gonna start with this. One card. Are you joking me or what? Okay, so he's down to no cards. We'll start putting some in the graveyard. Okay, so we'll get rid of some cards. There's an oven in there, so that's good news. No attacks. So he's going to do his sack. He's trying to like play the game with like starting with pretty much no cards. I'm confused. Does he think that the cat's just going to carry him through? I'd, I'm going to cry if it does. If he wins this game. Okay, so we've missed our land. We'll definitely get rid of those two. Gain a life. Maybe when he sees that I can do that, he might change his tone a little bit. So here I'm going to make it so we have three lands next turn. Can't miss another land. So next turn we'll go in with a citizen champion. And then we set up for a couple of hopefully draws. No attacks. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, so which one do we want back? A land. Okay. 
Okay, so that helped us a bit. That helped us quite a bit. So we're going to go in with a Citizen Champion. And down with another Spider. And in turn. Okay. He's going to continue on his loop. He's got another card to come, so probably digging on a land right now. There it is. Okay. So you're going to clutch it. You're going to do it properly. Yeah, so we'll sacrifice one of these. That's fine. Didn't do it properly. Okay, so I think it's pretty good for us to have a Wolf Haven card draw. Maybe into a land and then still have three four lands okay, so that's good so now we'll go like this get another card draw get rid of a bunch of cards we'll get a draw oh, and then we'll get another draw so he's got to be a little bit heartbroken that we've seen so much of our deck. Cool. Go in with the attack. Mm-hmm. Sure. And bring the cat back. No worries. So we can go in with the hatchery spider next, which can be quite handy. Okay, so we get rid of the two creatures this time, gain some life back. So should we go a hatchery spider? Or we could go digging for some more card draw. Yeah, we'll put a big 5-7 down. That might scare him a bit. Okay, so what are we going to find? Pardon me. Okay, so we're going to attach it to this guy. And we'll get two card draws. Plus our huge hatchery spider. So he would have to throw everyone under the bus to get rid of this. He's just going to do the cat. Sure. So that's gone now. Can't can't use that anymore. Okay, so what do we want to return to our hand? Well, I guess we're gonna go like 
another card draw from this guy. So that could be pretty, pretty schmaxy. Card draw. Another card draw. Another spider. Okay, so I think we go in with this guy, go in with this guy. And I mean we should go all in next turn so we can do a better hatchery spider and more creatures than Graveyard. I mean he's doing well, considering he started with friggin' three cards or whatever it was. Had an empty hand on turn two. Sure. So we've been floating around the 16, 16 to 18 health for a little while with the last few enchantments. So another cap, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so now that's definitely a painful thing to see. Okay. Alright, we'll keep this. Three lands, cast everything in the hand, that's how I like to start. Okay, so I think we go straight down with a wolf, so we've got our ramp. Okay, so next turn we can go Citizen Champion. Sweet, so hopefully he sticks around. And then if he doesn't, we at least do have a couple of different blockers here. We've got, we're up to four mana. Okay, so he sticks around. That's a little bit busted, man. So I think we go for the double card draw while we've got him. Yeah, go in with a three attack. So now he's going to be a target. And having him in the graveyard isn't the worst because we start loading it up for this hatchery. Not that we have the mana for it just yet, but. Okay, so. Ooh. That's pretty nice. But I think we should go like this while we can. Although getting a land right now would probably be better. Yeah. Couple of life. And then we'll put him down. Okay. And next turn. See what happens here. We could just chump block. As far as he didn't chump block and attack. So I feel like we're gonna chump block if he attacks in, so our hatchery spider is good. Three, four, five, we need one more land. One more land and our hatchery can come down. So no creatures in the graveyard, but we're gonna get a bunch of life back here.
card draw as well. So we get two life. There's another land. I actually think we should go down with this and get another card draw. Alright, so another card draw. So I highly doubt he wants to kill off his uh, things just yet. Is he going for the double block? No, he's not. Okay. No worries. We'll block with a snare spinner. So I've got one in the graveyard for him. So now that's two in the graveyard for him. And he should attack in here. I would imagine. No attacks. Interesting. So we'll get rid of some creatures. Gain some life. Okay, so... I thought we had... Oh, we won off the <laughs> archery spider. Okay, so... That's not going to... Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go like this. Get that land we need for the hatchery. Bunch of life. Can we now do that? We can. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll go to attackers. I'll swing with just the four. He can only block it with his blood dude, which would be amazing. Thank you. Surprised he didn't sacrifice it, but I guess he wanted to kill it. He wanted the quest of beast gone. So he had another one. Okay. So I think we get a citizen champion. So he's only two. He's only two now. So We'll go Citizen Champion. And down with another card draw. Cool. No, not that, thank you. We'll go for another spinner. Okay, so now I'm going all in. So you'll take a, a bit here. And we'll also fill our graveyard for the hatchery spider, hopefully. Okay, so there we go. We get the Death Toucher out of the way. So now we've got a 5 drop for the hatchery, which is good. Okay, so we've got another hatchery spider. 
So we'll go with one. Five. Get another one of these. Okay. So. No attacks. This is a pretty level match. I'm gaining life back. He's gaining life back. I don't have any straight removal. Okay, so that's not the best. Sure. Okay, so... We get a card draw and a buff, or double card draw, double buff. Okay, so that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So, I think we could possibly drop that guy, and he can't block our questing beast so we'll get three card draws here one okay so we'll get him down to start getting some life back with this a couple more card draws okay and then a blast zone Next to combat. Hmm. I think we go all in. Minus these guys. So which way are you going to go here? I could be playing very conservative now, but I feel like we're trudging through our deck. You know, like we've got 20 cards left and we haven't gotten him away from 20 health. Okay. A little bit of damage to him. Yep. And yep. No worries. So now we've got eight. So we're going to be seeing most of the, the deck that's left. Sure, sure, and sure. I think he's got it just because we're about to mill ourselves. Not having any flyers or trample has definitely proven to be a bit of a, a thing in this deck. Okay, so we need that guy out of here. do a land if we do that. Questing beast can't get through so I think, I think we go with the hatchery spider. It's kind of... Another sneeze. Bunch of life for us. Mm. 
And then we go all in. Okay, we're gonna start doing something here. Trying to save this when he has nothing there. Is he taking all the damage? Wow, okay. He went down to one, I don't understand. Wow! God, how many cars do we have left? I totally thought we were gonna lose that. <laughs> 